<laughs> Hi, I'm Ashlyn. I'm Lulu. And I'm Emily. And we're with the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press here with... Simi Linton. And Christian von Tippelskoj. Very nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Um, so first I have a question for you. What inspired you to make this movie? Simi and I knew each other already for many, many years through a relative of mine. And Simi had written a book, her memoir, and I had read it and I felt that that would be a very interesting film. At the same time, Simi had been approached by other people to uh, maybe consider turning the book into a feature film. So Simi and I was met at a party and she asked me, are you interested in helping me to figure things out about this issue. And then we got together and realized that it might be much better to do a documentary about this book and or about her life based on this book. And we then decided to work together on this uh, because we also felt, you know, if we direct and produce the book or the film together, um, we have uh, the best control of the material and are very sure that the story will be told the way Simi and I envision it. That's really great. Um, now, Simi, I have a question for you. At one point in the movie, you exclaim that if I hear the term people with special needs one more time, I'm going to punch somebody. Um, <laughs> where should we go with that? Where should we go with that? You want me to hold it? Yeah. Would that be easier? Okay. Um, see, here's the way I see it. We have a society that can make a decision to be inclusive and to accommodate all people. Or we as a society can make a decision to be exclusive and exclude all people. It's a mutual coming together, but the powers that be are the ones that need to create the legislation, enact the legislation, and then follow through on the legislation to make sure that things are both equitable and fully integrated. By labeling disabled people as people with special needs, and I always think this special is special, is a kind of ironic word, um, it says that we have special needs. And Truly, I think that an inclusive society doesn't tell us that we have special needs. It sets up an environment in which all people can function. At any given moment, each of us has special needs. You know, you've had a lousy day, any kind of thing like that. But to permanently be labeled as the ones with special needs puts the onus on us, the focus on us, as being extraordinary, as opposed to putting the focus on society to be accommodating. And I think it's a, an inappropriate term. I don't, I don't think it's right. It doesn't, doesn't help the situation. The title of your film and the poster image imply that dance is a central theme in your film, but it's not really. Tell us about where the title comes from and what it means. Well, invitation to dance uh, was very early on a title we enjoyed. And I can tell a very brief story which is not part of this film. Um, there was uh, the inauguration of uh, George Bush, and there was a photo in the New York Times. And that photo is still on Simi's desk. And that was our inspiration to the title. Um, it showed um, Barbara um, and uh, George Bush dancing at an inaugural ball and on the sidelines there was a um, Iraqi veteran in a uniform in a, sitting in a wheelchair. Uh, he had no legs anymore and had a drink in one hand and a cigarette in the other hand and he was watching uh, those uh, the um, presidential couple dancing, and we felt that was a, such a clear image of separation, and so we thought 
That's the takeoff point of our film. That was seven years ago. Um, you have seen the film, and that image is not there. That story is not in the film. But that was where we started out with. Sammy, early on, you decided to call yourself a disabled woman and to own the aspect of yourself and put it out front. And you went to Berkeley, which is a center of activity um, and for disabled. Tell us a little bit about how you developed as a person and an activist. I think the people that we are when we're young develop, you know, I, I think I was an activist from very, very early on. And, you know, you saw that I was involved in anti-war demonstrations and before that in civil rights demonstrations when I was 14, 15, 16. Uh, and I brought that into the disability experience. You know, it wasn't like it just started once I became disabled and met uh, some of the other disability rights activists, some of whom you meet in the film and some of whom were in the audience yesterday and my, my circle. Um, there are several parts to that question. One is, yes, to, to put disability first and to say, I'm a disabled woman, putting it out there and in a strong way. And uh, that identity took years to develop. Uh, it, you know, early on, ma this was true for me and for many other disabled people I've spoken to, whether they grew up with disabilities or had acquired disabilities, that early on there was a tendency to kind of push away from others because if you can see the social environment, you know who's cool and who's in and who's out and like, I'm not like them, I'm not like them. And then slowly, as I started to meet some of the amazing people that I started to meet, I realized I didn't want to push away from them. I wanted to be with them. I wanted to be with them and hang out with them and do things with them and think through things with them. And that moved from not only wanting to be with them, but wanting to be seen with them and seen as part of that group. Um, You've probably read about coming out stories of gay men and women um, coming out. And most of the time, those stories are of the slow emergence. You know, maybe they'll tell a few friends first. Then they tell this group. Then they tell that group. Then they tell their family. Then they tell their employers. It's not something that happens like, I came out. And the same thing is true for a lot of disabled people. We come out in stages. We own that identity. We start to ally with other disabled people. And then we want to be seen as part of that community. And that's the process. So tell us about the dance company Axis. You know, our decision to use that type of footage in the film uh, has a lot to do with what Simi just said in terms of coming out but also that you know is part you know that we feel or felt dancing and professional dancing in the film tells you know a story and accompanies the film and shows the options what's possible and that you know as Simi says at one point uh, you know uh, dancing does not belong to people only with two feet can dance on two feet, but you know you can dance with your nose, your ears, your tongue, your hands, everything. You know, as long as you know you have a sensitivity of rhythm and movement. Yeah, I remember um, in the movie you were talking about having a big dance party in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly when, and then you moved it to a whole um, ballroom. Do you still do that? Yes, the, um, the dance at the Society for Disability Studies is the focal point of my year. It's my favorite night of the year, every year. And although I'm pretty excited about tonight, but... Uh, <laughs> um, and yes, DJ, dance floor, everybody's there. Yeah, and you should mention we were, you know, three days ago when at the opening party Mm -hmm. uh, and we entered and there was the band with uh, 
uh, circle for people to dance. We probably were, you know, for two or three hours, uh. semi Alice. Mm -hmm. uh, other people with disabilities suddenly joined us. There was mm -hmm. a blind couple. There were mm -hmm. uh, some other. Uh, there was a guy woman. with crutches. Yes. So suddenly, you know, this whole party became uh, also something what we actually, you know, show in our movie. So we had a wonderful start here. <laughs> <laughs> that's really great and that's really insane.